thoughts, views, and comments expressed by Rodney Monker, his guests, callers, and advisors on Freedom March are not necessarily those of the management, ownership, or production unit of ILS, the Verizon Media Group. Freedom March is a production of ILTV Studios and cannot be reproduced or represented in part or entirety without the express written consent of the Verizon Media Group. Freedom March is the intellectual property of the Verizon Media Group. Copyright 2017. All rights are reserved. The role of a woman in the society is to submit. Birth control are the pills of the devil. Education is so fundamental to the development of a people. Hang murderers. Simple as that. What am I voting for? Voting will change nothing. Tout moun haïtien comme oye. God save the queen. Welcome back to Freedom March, broadcasting live on ILTV Studios here in Nassau, Bahamas. My name is Rodney Monka, and of course, I expect my spiritual advisor to join me. I spoke with him earlier in the day, and he told me that everything was fine. Well, folks, you know, there is the controversy going on over Dr. Minnis' decision to increase the salary of members of parliament, members who haven't done anything to improve the economy of the country, to improve the security of the nation, and they want an increase, and it has generated all sorts of controversy in the country. I spoke about it last week, and I condemned it. I want to look at the comments of the deputy leader of the Progressive Liberal Party, um, I. Chester Cooper, in which he criticized Baines Town, boy representative uh, for the FNM. Um, what's his name? The Negro male Robinson Travis. Um, he criticized Travis, and it is interesting because Travis says that the parliamentarians need more money. And by paying them more money, it will avoid corruption. So let's see what Cooper has to say. I test the Cooper, and I'm looking at the Nassau Guardian. He said that Robertson should apologize. Salary hike can wait. That is what Chester says. And as you know, Chester is, from all appearance, a trained economist. Um, he's able to put a wonderful economic argument to which the FNM has not been efficient in responding to it. So I want to look at it because there are a couple brothers on the blocks who I would like to demonstrate to them how Travis doesn't know what he's doing. And had it not been for Brent Simonet playing political games, we would not have this problem with Travis. Joining his fellow progressive liberal party MPs in rejecting Prime Minister Dr. Hubert Minister's pledge to raise the salaries of members of parliament in the next budget, Exuma and Rugged, Island, and Rugged Island MP Chester Cooper yesterday charged that a pay raise is not a priority for the country and must wait. Cooper also blasted Bain's Town and Grant's Town MP Travis Robinson for remarks he made in relation to the raise announcement and call on him to apologize. Robinson told the Tribune last week that an increase in MPs' salaries would help to deter corruption and likened the current $28,000 
annual salary to janitorial salaries. The people of Baines Town and Grand Sound should be insulted, Cooper said, at a progressive liberal young liberal general meeting. As I told you, I grew up among 12 children with very little money coming into our household in Little Exuma. And not for one day in my 45 plus years on this earth has anyone been able to put a price tag on my honor and integrity. I suggest the Prime Minister counsel his young MP, have him apologize to the people he represents, among whom there are many hard working janitors worthy of respect who only wish they made what MPs do now. And maybe the Prime Minister can have a talk with Mr. Robertson about how even the richest of people can still be corrupt. Corruption is an issue of character, not of compensation, Chester Cooper was trying to teach Travis. Why he doesn't support a raise at this time? Cooper said, Menace made the announcement in Parliament on Thursday. Cooper called it the Prime Minister's latest display of rank hypocrisy and poorly taught out public utterances. Cooper noted that while serving as opposition leader in 2014, Menace said he would not agree to any salary increases for MPs if he became leader after a bipartisan House committee agreed to a salary review. Now, after turning his back on his own people who sat on a committee and recommended a raise for parliamentarians just three years ago, Menace is announcing that he intends to give MPs a raise in the next budget, Cooper said. This after spending the last six months telling everyone how broke the country is, how damaged our finances were, supposedly because of how badly the PLP managed the economy. And after freezing hiring in government, after stalling for months on paying contracts, after mandating that every ministry take a 10% budget cut. Now the Prime Minister's big idea is to give MPs a salary hike. Chester said, I categorically don't support a raise for MPs at this time, and I am unlikely to support it during the next budget exercise if it is included. In 2014, under the Christie administration, a parliamentary select committee recommended the salaries of MPs be reviewed. The committee noted that MPs have not received a pay increase in 25 years. Cooper said, despite a review being warranted, the matter is not a priority given the pressing issues the country is facing. He also noted that the majority of MPs in Parliament are new to Parliament and knew what the salary was when they accepted the job. So this is powerful observation. You would recall that in December of 2016, I became a senator. And I was getting a small, meager salary. And one day, I was at the Princess Margaret Hospital. And a high-level government official pointed out to me, showed me one or two pregnant women, and said, you see those pregnant women there? We are in trouble. They do not have the means by which they can buy food. That is what they pointed out to me. And after they told me that, 
I took a decision that my little mega salary, I will share it with pregnant woman. That's what I used to do. As I move about being in Grandstown, and it became obvious that the woman them was breeding. I give them some of my little money. And that was small, small money that I was making. And I go further down the road and I run into a couple of Negro men with little baby children. And I share my salary with them. Now certainly, these Negroes in the parliament, they are extremely wealthy, many of them. And so they ought to assess the people them. It is regrettable that the young member of parliament for Bainstown and Grandstown did not complete his education at the University of the Bahamas. I think ministers have done that young man an injustice by encouraging him to stop studying, to stop reading, to stop learning. Because had he remained studying, he would have recognized that when you examine Dr. Minnis himself, here is a man that we know is extremely um, wealthy. But notwithstanding that Dr. Minnis is extremely wealthy, his wealth has not precluded him from making certain fundamental and philosophical corruption move. And what are they? Notwithstanding that Minnis is a multimillionaire, had these big, big contracts, he never disclosed it. So you see, Travis, what you say ain't true. Minnis, by not disclosing those contracts, that constitute, whether he realized it or not, corruption. So, Travis, that ain't true. It would appear that among these Negroes, the more wealthy they are, the more corrupt and corruptness they shall display. So, I thought I'll say that on that point. Well, um, Fred Smith is accusing Dr. Minnis of fascism and the FNM because he is concerned over menace strategy in terms of the rounding up of illegal immigrants. And whenever you hear illegal immigrant, they mean Haitian. No mind, they may grab one or two Jamaican and some other nationalities, but principally Haitian. And for those of you, I must remind you that what is, is that Fred Smith was born in Haiti to a Bahamian father and a foreign mother. And as a result of his father apparently working in Haiti for the British government, in which the Bahamas was a colony, his dad and his mom registered his bite at the local British council, establishing Fred citizenship. So Fred has invested plenty of money in the FNM, and he is upset over what he called Dr. Minnis' illegal move to lock up the Haitian Dam. Well, the Minister of Social Service, she has a wonderful father, Derek Ambadar Thompson. Derek is getting married. Ambadar is getting married. He has a wonderful Haitian sweetheart. And Ambadar is smart. He knows that he fought hard with the FNM. Ambadar recognized that notwithstanding the fact that he spent his money and used his time to get the FNM elected, now his daughter, Lanisha, don't want to make sure he get a little contract. And Ambadar is a good man. Giving Ambadar a contract is not nepotism because Ambadar is a wonderful Bahamian man from being town, and he's pure in his politics. So the FNM is supposed to give Ambadar a lot of contract. Then Minister Ambadar under stress because Ambadar, as you know, he just suffered a horrible situation when his common law Bahamian wife died. It's left him heart broken and very sad. And now Minister announced that he's going to catch Haitian. And so Ambadar, recognizing that the time has come to do the right thing. And today, in fact, this afternoon, in the district of New Providence, appeared before me that Negro gentleman, Derek Ambadar Thompson, the father of Seabreeze member of parliament, 
and the minister responsible for social services, um, Jason Lanisha Roll. And Ambadar, I was so excited when he showed up at my office and he declared that he was going to marry Miss Toussaint. I said, Ambadar, you're doing the right thing. He said, listen, I'm now going to look for the Right Honorable Hubert Alexander Ingram. And I want you from on TV today, Monica, to announce to the whole country that I'm going to be marrying my sweetheart, Francis Toussaint. Or if you were talking total French, you could have said Francois Toussaint. Um, Toussaint. So he is marrying Miss Francis Toussaint. And I am so happy for him. And he asked me, he said, Monk, I'm giving you this invitation. Promise me you're coming to the wedding. I said, Ambada, if God spare my life, Sunday the 26th of November, I shall appear at the Seven Days Adventist Church, the Grand Strong branch of the church, and I shall attend your wedding. So the Francis and Derek, with great joy, together with their families, Francis Toussaint, and Derek Ambadar Thompson requests the pleasure of your company at the celebration of their marriage, Sunday, the 26th of November, 2017, 2 o'clock in the afternoon, Grand Strong Seven Day Adventist Church, Wellington Street, Nassau, Bahamas. So, Mr. Ingram Ambadar says he's coming to bring your invitation because he can't get married unless you and me are there. I call on his daughter, Minister Lanisha Roll, let your father go. He's deeply in love with Miss Toussaint. And of course, the man has to protect his relationship and his family because the party which he support is now out to catch people like Miss Toussaint. I am so happy that Amber Da is going to marry his sweetheart. I am so hard. And to Madame Tussi, my best friend, no, pour connaître moi content pour nous. Moi content pour nous. I'm happy. And so I'm not only happy, but I'm honored that in the midst of Dr. Menace rounding up, Ambada stands out as a proud Bohemian man who will take his lover to the church on time. And I asked Minister Anisha Rule, let your daddy go. He's in love and he's lonely. And Madame Toussaint has brought great joy in his heart. And so Lanisha, let him go. So all children, Y'all got to stop trying to stop man them from getting married when they feel like doing it again. So I'm happy for Ambata, and I want the whole, all the people of Bainstown and Grandstown to know that Ambata is going to marry his sweet, sweet boom, boom. Oh, yeah. And I'm happy for Ambata. And if it was not copyright, I would have sang the song, Take me to the church on time. Ambada is getting married. Lanisha, play a role. Ambada is a good man, and he's suffered a lot under the FNM since May. This is Freedom March. Ambada is getting married. To Francois Toussaint. Freedom March with Rodney Monker will be right back after this. The thoughts, views, and comments expressed by Rodney Monker, his guests, callers, and advisors on Freedom March are not necessarily those of the management, ownership, or production unit of ILS, the Verizon Media Group. Freedom March is a production of ILTV Studios and cannot be reproduced or represented in part or entirety without the express written consent of the Verizon Media Group. Freedom March is the intellectual property of the Verizon Media Group. Copyright 2017. All rights are reserved. Um, well, it's clear that Attorney General mm -hmm. Carl Battle is encouraging sweet adding. Yeah, I wondered about that.
In 2001, I wondered about that. Carl, you must have forgotten when Hubert Alexander Ingram appointed you and Janet Boswick to wage the campaign on that new bill, which I then call and name the Sweetheart Bill. And I had to follow Mrs. Boswick and Carl Bell all over New Providence to condemn the fact that they were supporting sweethearting. And it's amazing. 17 years later, Carl is making the same mistake. And I want Carl to stop it. Yeah, interesting. Uh, we have alre we already have a nation in this country with um, bastard children. Stop and calling now, stop calling these children bastard because <laughs> Papa and now I'm gonna you know, I have to stop you. The citizenship right as it relates to male or female, whether they're married or not, I don't know. It's well I know a woman that Carl them can cause care kill. I know of a foreign woman that y'all can cause that Bahamian man yeah, to kill. Don't, don't say that to Mr. Murray. How you mean? You. Let me explain. Going a bit far, you should ask me why I'm saying it. Uh, I think I know why. Well, if you know why, support me. I think, I think Let me show you why. That's, that's dangerous, I mean. Watch what Carl Doe's are doing. If they were being as revolutionary mm -hmm. as they are suggesting, they would then pass their bogus law without saying that there has to be what kind of test? DNA. A DNA test. I figure he's going that to Chinese room. baby yeah. is not it ain't your baby? the black man's baby. <laughs> you heard me? I don't know. You may skip a couple generations and you never know. If a man says that he is the father of a child, why should that man be subjected to yeah. DNA test? Yeah. You heard me? Yeah. If the man says that the Chinese baby is his baby, don't mind the Chinese don't look like him, nor the mother. You should not demand <laughs> that there be a DNA test because among some of the Negroes, they like color. The woman can bring them any brown skin, light skin, white. Chinese baby. Now, huh, we can see what can happen because I know that he is going to apply for citizenship for the baby. But Carl said there has to be DNA. And anybody see that man and that baby, they, they would, would know. know. It, it couldn't was. possibly mm -hmm. be his, his baby, baby because, because he, he had no Chinese, Chinese in his family in a thousand years. You see how they can cause scandal? What should happen is let the man just say, these are my children. And once he says, it is his children, my spiritual advisor, then, let him then you give him, him. Yeah. and then you give citizenship. Yeah, okay. But Carl now will know if biologically the man is the father. And I, I know that that couldn't possibly be his baby because the baby looks, looks like, like John Jay. Wow. Yeah. yeah. And Mr. Shea died in yeah, 1968. Yeah, but don't do that. Don't do that. Leave don't that. do what? Yeah, leave that alone. Don't. I mean, don't do, don't do that. You can imagine, once Carl but listen, gave this baby citizenship, yeah. my wife will use it as an excuse to bring the baby back in my house. And, and I've told her, woman, don't bring that child in my house. Uh, so what do you think? Uh, well, it is what it is, Mr. Monka. Um... I guess sometimes they say what you don't know don't hurt, eh? There are a lot of men who are taking care of kids that, that you know, may not but be But they're not required to have DNA. I understand that. Huh? You know, I understand that. And then secondly, Carl and Dr. Menes knows that we rejected that in the referendum. All right? But I think the former administration may have decided to go this route as well, rather than having to go through a what? referendum. I mean, Which form administration? I'm talking about the PLP. The PLP went through a referendum. But I'm saying... And that uh, was on the but ballot. This, this was the way to do it, rather than going through the referendum. No, right? we already went through the referendum. We have already declared that unlawful. Oh, okay. And okay. ministers trying to sneak through the back door. Carl, listen to me. 
I don't want you to cause me to do what I did 17 years ago. I had to follow him and Mrs. Janet Boswick. Mm -hmm. And every time they got up, I rebuked them. I, I, I told Janet Boswick that for a Christian married woman, she should stop supporting this sweetheart bill. And Carl was attorney general. Everywhere he went in Nassau, I followed in him and run him. Carl, I don't want to go back along that line. Let's stick with the referendum. We already say no citizenship. Now you and Dr. Minnis is about to cause some woman them to get killed. That's what they're going to cause. That's what they're going to cause. Because the man believes it's his child. I understand that. And now, in order to establish citizenship, what has to happen? Huh? What has to happen? Can you imagine two black people with a whole Chinese baby? <laughs> huh? <laughs> two black people with a whole Chinese baby. And that's what Carl them are going to do. You're going to cause a bunch of domestic disputes. Because that Chinese baby, when they do that DNA, that can't pass. You see my point? Yep. Now, if you do DNA with the Chinese and the mother, it will pass. But by grab, look what is going to happen. Call them mm -hmm. a... Huh? Janet should speak to them and tell them that speed adding is wrong. I, I, we got to go back over this yeah. over and over yeah. and over. We all know that, Mr. I mean, Marker. it's something is fundamentally wrong. Let's see what Carl says. Yes, we all know that. Let's see what Carl has to say because he is taking a position which the people them voted against. Why is Carl as Attorney General acting unlawfully? Carl, stop bringing up these issues that can cause us to run out. Oh boy, I just hope Janet Boswick isn't supporting this like how she did 17 years ago. I just hope. All right, and I'd like to know what is Dame Joan Sawyer position on this. Dame Joan, what is your position on this? And spiritual advisor, stop calling these people bastard because Papa has saved that's, all of yeah, us well, that's what it is. from bastardy. Yeah, but you can't you can't clean up a bastard though. A bastard is a bastard. If you're born outside a red lock, you're born outside a red lock. That's it's a stigma you'll carry with you for the rest of your life. You call it a stigma? Yeah. Really? Yeah, to be born outside of marriage is not a good thing. It's it's distasteful. Really? It's a sin, yeah. yeah. It's, it's a sin. See, like me, I'm born inside of marriage, so I, I'm proud. Wow, this is powerful. But listen, let me just clear this up, though, so people won't be bashing me. Now, the child that's born outside of wedlock is not responsible for that. All right? They, that, that sin well, does not the rest with them. if the child is not, yeah, responsible, not responsible, then why the parents, the parents, are you condemning? I'm not condemning anything. I'm just saying that it's, it's to be born are. outside of wedlock. The Bible says it's a sin. I've told you that Papa... It's called fornication. We're talking about the law now. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Papa, under the status of Children Act, has liberated us from bastiosity to legitimacy. Really? Yeah. Okay. So there a is... Bas a bastard could inherit, right? But he's no longer a bastard. <laughs> Can't you understand what I'm saying? <laughs> Listen to me one more time. Hubert Alexander Ingram, mm -hmm. in 2001, created the Inheritance Act, yeah, uh -huh. which permit uh -huh. children born to a parent to inherit uh -huh. collectively As if there child. is no will. Okay. You remember? Yeah, I remember. Okay. Janet yeah. Boswick I think I remember now. and Dr. Bernard Nottage got in a row over it. You remember? Yes, yes, yes. Dr. Nottage told Senator. Mrs. Boswick that he think it's unfair for a married woman, sweetheart child, to be able to inherit in the marriage. Mm -hmm. But a married man, sweetheart child, can't inherit. And Dr. Nottage told Janet Boswick and the last FNM Parliament of 2000 and what was it? Whatever that election was, 1997. Yeah. Um, Dr. Nottage thought it was discriminatory. All right? Yeah. Now, Carl is about to raise these issues again. Carl, you better stop it, man, because 
you're going to cause domestic violence. I could think about three sets of children. The man them going to go crazy because he can't get citizenship for the child, according to Carl, unless there's a DNA. And once they do DNA, That's a problem, I right? could bet. Sabah's talking about cracking the court. I could crack that one because <laughs> it is impossible <laughs> for that black man <laughs> with a black woman <laughs> to have a whole a Chinese, Chinese baby. <laughs> Go ahead. Oh, Lord. And I've been this? mad for years. I've been mad. That's what oh, they're doing. Oh, boy, this is a mess. All eh? right? This is a mess. Carl is going to cause man to know about the infidelity. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. If Carl says to the man, okay, this is your girlfriend, and this is a Chinese baby, mm -hmm. and you claim to be the daddy, yeah, so, so okay, we can give you citizenship. But Carl is about to cause war in this country because that Negro man is related to me, and I've off limit the Chinese baby until such time as they will admit what this is, talking nonsense to me. I can't take them kind of things. But Carl, go right ahead. Just have the police ready to do lots of investigation because that Chinese baby ain't a black man on. He's as black as you, my spiritual advisor. Really? Yeah. Uh -huh. You think? You can make a Chinese Now, baby? listen, I, I see a lot of comments coming across um, this Facebook page, right? What's that? Oh. What are you talking the queen, about? Uh, what are our you lady doing? keeps falling off the just, desk. Just, listen. Just, just pick it up. The, yeah, the camera's on me. But Put the camera back on me so the spiritual advisor could do what it's doing. Yeah. All right? This, this is sweet outing. Yeah, but, but here's the point I want to make, all right? Carl, know that sweet outing is wrong. It is a sin. Right? Mm -hmm. But the children are already here now. Mm -hmm. So how are we going to solve that problem? Well, yeah, well I the guess. The people rejected it. Minutes know that sweet outing is wrong. He knows it. Carl knows. Who else knows? Peter knows. They all know. Now. Instead of, if you're going to pass the law, just say, let the man sign the affidavit, uh -huh. the affidavit, and he's the father. But now, Carl is saying, you hear me? Yeah, so let's to avoid all this, let's encourage people to get married and, and have D they children married. inside of wedlock. And all then, right? let's stop this outside of wedlock stuff because uh, it, it, works, it works against that, us after a while. That's idle talk. I'm just the reality. Listen, as long as... There are too many children in this country being born outside of wedlock, Mr. Monica. Listen, too many. 85%. 85. That's 85 out of every 100 births. So what births. you going to do? What wow. you going to do? Maybe we need to start preaching the gospel more, I guess. I think so. Preach against I only want to know. I can't wait. Because that Chinese baby been on my mind for years. Uh. I want to see how this can turn out. And we can blame it on Carl. Janet Boswick. Mr. Ingram, put you in charge in 2001 to lead this campaign. Speak to them and tell them that they're on the wrong track. And Carl ought to know that something is fundamentally wrong. I don't know. Let's see what Carl says. Was that in the Guardian? Yeah. Okay. Government to address children of unmarried right, Bahamian men and foreign women. Attorney General Carl Battle. Reveal that the government intends to amend the law and allow children born to unmarried Bahamian men and foreign women or foreign women an automatic right to Bahamian citizenship. Better revelation came oh. after Prime Minister Dr. Hubert Minnis announcement last week that the government intends to amend the law to ensure that all children born outside, outside, let's go to it, outside the Bahamas, the Bahamian women automatically receive Bahamian citizenship. In a recent interview, just bear with me, because it's important that Carl will not support this level of controversy. 
because I cursed him and Janet Boswick out 16 years ago over the same sinful thing. You remember? When Ingram had Mrs. Boswick advocating, along with Carl Bettel, that if you had children who were single, let's say an 18-year-old man and an 18-year-old girl, they shack up together for seven years. Ingram had in the law, and he had Janet Boswick, a decent married woman, advocating that if a single man and a single woman shack up for seven years, and while shocking up for seven years, they were mating and making children and doing things. They said that at the end of the seven years, when the man died, the woman is to inherit, even if she did not have any children. And I could see Janet. Janet was smiling. She thought she was being revolutionary until I stood up. And I said to Janet Boswick, there was a man who was in that relationship for seven years. And they broke up on the seven years. And he grabbed another woman. And he shock up, fornicate with her for seven years. And he left her. And he found a third woman. And he shock up for seven years. I said, Janet, when he dies, which of the three women? will be his heir at law. And Janet didn't think about it. Hubert Ingram didn't think about it. Carl Bettel, who was the attorney general, they didn't think about it. And when I dropped that on them, I demanded that Janet stop supporting Sweet Addy. I told them, I said, don't mind that I was the child of a married man who didn't marry to my ma. Y'all are supporting Sweet Addy. And sweethearting is sinful, my spiritual advisor. And I made Ingram drop that out of the Inheritance Act. And I called the Inheritance Bill. I said, this bill, now and henceforth and forever, shall be known as the Sweetheart Bill. And for Carl Bettel, 17 years later, to come back with the same nonsense. Carl, you ain't saved, man. Y'all better stop this man. Y'all can cause woman to either kill man or man to kill woman. Because that Chinese baby ain't a man baby. He too black. And the woman too black. So that couldn't be his baby. But I do believe it is the woman's baby. This is what Carl them are doing. Y'all are now raising a woman gang tail. The child is always a woman. Huh? Y'all are raising up the woman gang tail. And y'all know the song. Raise up your gong tail. And that's what y'all are doing. All right? Why do we need to get distracted by this? Carl should go and get minutes to find some job. Huh? What bastard children they got wrong here that they feel they need to be immunized. Meanwhile, thousands of Negro children born to Haitian will not share the same revolutionary status. Minister me saved, man. They're not safe. So this whole thing is going to come down to the biological argument as to who make the baby. And I's a kind of Negro. I plain speaking. I can mind children. I got no problem helping anybody with children. But there's one thing I can't take. It's the wrong baby. I can't take the wrong relative. You got to bring me the right baby. If you want me to play family, now we ain't playing family, we'll play human beings. And I have no problem in buying food for people's baby. But if you try to put a baby on me, I scare mad. And if you try to put a baby on a relative of mine, I told my wife, must be 12 years ago, I said, woman, if I come back and I meet a whole Chinese baby in my bed, it can be me and you. I don't do nonsense. When it comes to that, because I can't take the duplicity if it is personal. So this is what is going on. Carl and Menace, instead of they go and find job, they're creating distraction. My spiritual advisor, should you not rebuke Carl? You did enough. And tell him. And that's your friend, man. You can't barge, you know. Why are you, why are you hanging Carl like that, man? How you mean I hang Carl? Gee. 
You Kyle. said enough. You said it well, man. You, yeah, you, you, you said it well. Yeah. You, you don't want to call man? No. No. No? I leave it just like that. Stop sweethearting, man. Stop having these children outside of wedlock. Stop mixing up our kids. You know what I mean? Mind you, it's not their fault. You know what I mean? But we got to remember that they're going to carry that for the rest of their lives. Carry what for the rest of their life? The stigma of being born outside man, of wedlock. Man, stop talking nonsense. Let me give you the, 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 let me give you the dynamics. You know, you know, you, you know seriously, this be born outside of wedlock. As a matter of fact, um, the Jews accuse Jesus of being outside of being born outside of red law. They accuse that's just how powerful uh, that sin is. I want you to stop it. All right. So I, we want to encourage people Dame to Jones get Sire. married. Do you know Dame Jones? Sire? Listen, I am not I, arguing whether or not these kids become decent citizens of the country. I'm not denying to me. I'm that. I'm going to give you an example. I'm looking at that sin. Let's look sin. at my cousin. That's fornication, and adultery. Let's look at my cousin Dame Jones Sawyer. Mm -hmm. Dame Jones Sawyer. She born outside of red law. Yes. She's a bastard. Yes. Okay. But she arose, went forth, get one of the greatest education, uh -huh. and has conquered. Right? Uh -huh. Okay. Yeah, that's, that's good. That's Let's positive. look at Dr. Minnis. Dr. Minnis is a bastard. You want to say the word doctor? Huh? This whole country, eh? Dr. Jeez. Minnis is a bastard. He is the second bastard prime minister in a modern Bahamas. A lot of people having a lot of sex outside of marriage, man. All right. My God. So you had two prime ministers born in holy bad luck. Okay. That and two. Which two? You, um, Lyndon Oscar Pinling. And? And Perry Gladstone Christie. Okay. And then you had two. All right. You with Ingram as a bastard? Yes. Wow. You better be careful. That's and deep. Papa changed the law. You want, want some more bastards? <laughs> Do you want some? No, no, no. That's, that's, that's huh? enough for Remember me. I promised to declare bastard day. Dim Joan Sawyer is perhaps one of the greatest bastard women I know. Hmm. When Sir Oval knighted her on behalf of Her Majesty the Queen and as he rests the sword on her right and left shoulder, mm. she break out crying and she said she sat confessing at government house. She told Sir Oval Mm -hmm. Dame Joan Sawyer told Sir Orville how she was born between the sheet. Man, stop that. That's <laughs> a fact. I don't tell lies. I don't tell lies. Oh, so stop Lord. ridiculing. I'm not ridiculing. All right? I am looking I can at tell you, you the sin. You, I can tell you about some great people you can't ridicule. that had it not been for sweet adding. Yes, but what I'm saying is you, you don't ridicule those people born outside of wedlock, you know. But you've done it. No, I haven't. Yes, you um, did. What I am encouraging all of our folks to do is to get married and have these children it's too late. legitimately. It's too late. Let's stop How it, the though. heck let's, you let's, expect let's slow, let's for stop my this. pa to get married when he was a married man? Oh, you see what I'm saying? You see what kind of sin he committed? But, but we should amend the law. He went let's into another Let's amend the law woman. and allow a man to have more than one wife. Remember David? Yeah, that's that. David was a man that after was God's own Yeah, but that was heart. never God's original will, though. It was a man after all God, after God's but own heart. But it was not God's original will. But when will. he saw decent Bet, Bel, what's yeah, the woman the name? The ends does not justify the means. So don't Bet do that. Sheba. Yeah, yeah, he he suffered for that. eh? Who came from his he line? He suffered. Give for me the great that. king that came from his Solomon, line. Solomon, he suffered for that though. Solomon could only come one way, and that was through sweethearting. Sweethearting. Is a oh, mystery. Okay. What you doing, man? <laughs> Lord, I thank you for men and I women. I can't laugh at that. That's not that right, though. Because in the history <laughs> of this country, some of our greatest leaders came as a result of Sweet Eddie. This is Freedom March. I'll talk about it when we return. Freedom March with Rodney Monker will be right back after this. This is Freedom March with Rodney Monker. Welcome back to Freedom March, broadcasting live on ILTV Studios here in Nassau, Bahamas. I am discussing the Nassau Guardian, in which noted Queen's Counsel and Attorney General Carl Bettel says once a man can show that they or once children are able to show 
that they are the natural children biologically of a Bahamian male who was born in the Bahamas, then they will automatically have the right to citizenship once the court makes the declaration of paternity. I'm going to come right back to that. Let me deal with a statement from opposition leader Philip Rave Davis, and then I'll come back to show you how Dr. Minnis and Carl Bettel can cause man to kill woman. But let's deal with this. The leader of the opposition, the Honorable Philip Brave Davis, said in his statement that the Progressive Liberal Party does not believe that the personal needs of well-off politicians should come amid supposed policies of austerity, including but not limited to the firing of hundreds of public service workers, funding cuts to essential scholarship programs for young Bahamians, and a reduction in social assistance to the poor because the proverbial cupboard was declared bare by the Minister of Finance. It comes off to the general public as hypocritical, insensitive, mean-spirited, and selfish. I want my producer to cut off his mic because everything you're saying is distracting me. This FNM government continues to produce the wrong remedies for the wrong time. Now, it proposes to look after its own while many Bahamian families are hurting. This is, after all, a government whose Minister of Tourism fired tourism personnel in Grand Bahama, an island with the highest unemployment rate. If Hubert Minnis believes members of Parliament cannot live on the salaries they are currently making, he should place himself in the shoes of the thousands of Bahamians who live from hand to mouth, including those fired by the government, said Mr. Davis. What concerns the PLP is the overwhelming proof we now have that the Prime Minister cannot be trusted. His proposal to raise MPs' salaries comes just three years after he stated that as long as he was leader of the FNM, he would never support a salary increase for parliamentarians while Bahamians are suffering. Well, Mr. Prime Minister, Bahamians are still suffering. Last week's proposal by the Prime Minister to raise salaries fits a troubling pattern of hypocrisy and flip-flopping. The government should focus its efforts on improving the economic livelihood of the Bahamian people before enhancing their own. Announce a strategic plan for sustainable economic growth and reduce the pain of Bahamian families caused by their short-sighted fiscal consolidation policies. The Prime Minister calls himself a man with a heart. Well, there was, well, where was that heart when children across the country struggled because their parents were made redundant, said Philip Brave Davis. At this point, I shout and give a salute to a wonderful Negro woman I met outside the National Insurance Board today, Kimberly Burroughs. I told you I would never forget because you have declared that you are one of the woman now. Well, let's go back to Carl Belt, my spiritual advisor, because it is interesting that the Guardian, I'll show you all the Guardian. Here's the Guardian, where Philip, where Carl Battle, say men to get citizenship. But look what he does. He now wants to subject the man 
to the children to a paternity test. If I say that the child is my child, why do I have to be subjected to a paternity test? Suppose I am biologically impotent. But suppose I lack the capacity for reproduction. Now, I'm about to be embarrassed. All right? Why should men have to prove that they are the father of the children? Huh? Why? In Frankie affidavit, dated the 8th of July, 1983, his putative father, the late Edwin Campbell, never signed the affidavit. And Frankie is a Bahamian, based on that affidavit. All right? But Carl wants to subject Bahamian men to a scandal because a lot of these children don't belong to the man. And that is why, historically, many men don't take care of children once the woman leaves them. Because they are more in love with the woman than the children them. I'm not saying it's right. I'm only giving you some anecdotal information. So look what Carl is saying. Carl doesn't give man an or a man's children, children born to men out of wedlock, an automatic right without scrutiny, without DNA, an automatic right to citizenship. So what is going to happen to the Negro man? who fathered a Chinese baby with a Negro woman, it is then when he is told that the baby is not his baby, that's when Delia write the note. That's when Delia write the note. Because if you were to look historically to those kinds of relationship, many people try to hold up their nose, right? But had it not been for sweet adding, many of some of the most sophisticated men in politics and in religion would not be here to lead state nor church. And certainly, if that is the means by which they came to the earth, certainly I must ask the question, has God really condemned that method? Because we know here in the Bahamas that some of the top men in the church were not born in holy matrimony. But Carl say that the children gonna have to have a DNA test. Huh? So what happens then? When the man proudly stepped forward to give citizenship and a court must declare the paternity of that man by virtue of the evidence of DNA. Huh? What happened then, Carl? What you think happened to the Chinese baby? You think they can find Mr. Wong? You think they can find the real daddy? Yeah, but the paternity test protects the citizenship, Mr. Monka. You understand You're that, right? You're missing the point. The paternity test protects the citizenship, right? Yes. So here it is, you have... A uh, Bahamian woman and a Bahamian man, right? Producing the Chinese baby, right? So here's what that means. The paternity test shows that the baby does not belong to the Bahamian man, so it protects the citizenship. The ba the, the and that's the end of the story. Well, that the, man. Well, then the... That the man who bought <laughs> the baby and left it in my bed, right? Huh? What you think? But the... <laughs> You're missing a point, I man. understand. I'm, come, come, I'm come, come. I'm understanding don't, exactly don't what you're saying. Me. But the paternity protects the citizenship. But That's what it does. What it does to the relationship. <sighs> when it now dawns on the man that he was the biggest fool in the hall of Baintown. What happens then? Yeah, huh? Yeah, you get trouble. What happens yeah, then? There's trouble in the campaign. That's that. the point I'm yeah. making. And is it the duty of government to create social unrest and domestic violence. Because if I discovered that the Chinese baby yours. is not his baby, all hell broke loose. All hell break loose. Yeah. You follow my point? So how is God uh, them solving the problem? Wow. If they want to help the man, they should say to the man, all children that you have signed for, we can go into the bedroom. We're going to go on the premise 
that you already had occupation of the bedroom. Uh. And we're not going to go beyond the sheets to find out what happened biologically. Listen to me, my brother. I'm 60. I am 60. And I can't wait so, for the Chinese baby to do the DNA. So to avoid that, you get married. The baby that whatever exists. Baby, whatever oh, baby on, your oh, wife bring home, that's your baby. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. You, you, you understand that, right? Why are you missing the point? I'm not missing the point, man. The baby exists. Call them in talking about baby to be made in the future. That is not what they're talking about. They're not saying that this law will apply one year after it comes into force. They're talking about babies that are under construction at this very moment. <laughs> Why are you laughing? And they're talking about babies who after construction, despite. <coughs> so Carl has not addressed this properly. Menace has not addressed this because there's a Chinese baby. And I don't play. I'm a humanitarian. I love people. But now I don't like to play family. Every time I see my ma family, I say, peace family, hey. They tell me, yeah. When I see my daddy family, I say, peace family, hey. They say, yeah. Because I don't like to unknowingly play family. So how Carl can support this? How? Huh? Mm. But if he leave it as it is, my foolish relative will continue to mine the Chinese baby and tell us how we have Chinese in our blood. Huh? Y'all are creating problem. I haven't had Chinese in my blood in over a thousand years. <laughs> huh? <laughs> but they come up. All ministers them can do is cause domestic violence. The policemen have to be picking up man for beating woman. I'm not advocating it. I'm not advocating it. That's a slip but slope, this man. is emotional things. Scary, eh? It's about love. It's about mating. It's about children. Yes, but it is about inheritance. In marriage. Huh? In marriage. These children then born. They how you can't marry it. How you could marry it and the man is a married man. How you could marry it and the man don't like the woman no more. Mm. Come, man. Come. <laughs> huh? Oh, what a tangle, baby. Huh? Eh? Carly is safe. That's what the problem is. And many say where you put me. So if you're serious about citizenship, there ought to be no test. Let the man come and say, you see all them children there? They're my children. They are my children. So all you can do is cause domestic violence. Because the first baby that I shall be demanding, and take it from me and my family, I got plenty of influence. By the time I don't tell Ima, okay, encourage him to go do, do it. I mean, it's nice having a whole Chinese. It is nice, but Carl, let him not have to be subjected to DNA because his heart will be broken. His heart will be broken. Because you know these Negro people, they love color. Don't mind they black as pot. See the white man baby and they say that's their baby. See the Chinaman baby and they say that's their baby. See the Indian baby and they say that's their baby. Because they are slaves and they're caught up with color. But Carl, you and Menace is going to be responsible for a lot of domestic violence. Because the DNA shall be conclusive evidence to support citizenship. But if you want to help the child, all you have to say, whatever child the man says his child shall be given citizenship and the law shall not have the authority to go behind the scene and check from the date of the commencement of the pregnancy of the mother to the date of the bite. My spiritual advisor, have I put uh, in a good case? I guess you have, you know. I guess. The child always belongs to the mother, eh? That's interesting. Always. But in this case... But it's... I don't, I, I don't get in that, man. My spiritual yeah. advice, you have to be prepared to make decisions. Yeah, I don't say, get say, in that. Shall that's, I make decisions? That's a slippery slope. I say slope. all the children the man says his own... That's a slippery slope. ...shall be his own. Whether or not 
There are what Carl called. Let's look at what Carl said. Because a lot of these women ain't faithful in putting baby on these man. Stop saying that. Stop you attacking the woman. You know that, right? I say stop it. Because of no woman has ever lied on me. <laughs> so you stop that. Okay? Uh, boy, Once, this you. is what Carl say. Once they can show that they are the natural, natural. children, mm -hmm. biologically, mm -hmm. of a Bahamian mm -hmm. male mm -hmm. who was born in the Bahamas, Bahamas. then they will automatically oh, have right. the right to citizenship, citizenship yeah. once the court makes the declaration of paternity. Now, you mean to tell me, after mining that Chinese baby, all them years, buying food, buying clothes, sending her to nice school, I think Carl may be a, right on this one. A court is now going to tell him that the child did not pass the DNA test. What you think can happen? What you think can happen? Take it from me. I know what I'm talking about because I'm faced with a situation. Listen, all Carl is trying to do is he is trying to avoid shame and scandal What in the shame and scandal? There's no shame and scandal. Your daddy We're ain't living. your daddy, but your mother don't know. Yes. Or your daddy ain't your daddy, and your daddy don't know. So let's leave these things alone <laughs> and keep our bedroom business. I don't know the Chinese baby ain't nothing to be. Shame and scandal in the family. But the father don't believe it. So why you won't give him conclusive evidence for him to go crazy? Huh? Go crazy. That's what is going to happen. Huh? And they say they love the woman them. If you love the woman them, then let the man decide he is the father without a paternity test. It's simple and as that. you think that's fair? What's that? Look, the man got it. Bradley, my spiritual advisor, you are a Negro man. And if a Negro woman bring you a Chinese baby, wouldn't you be smart enough to know that the baby that's mine. Mr. Wong Child. <laughs> huh? Hey? Uh, boy. Wouldn't you be smart enough? Let's move on, man, because this, this subject is something else. I just have to show Carl them that. Yeah. I want him to stop it. Carl, stop it. You're going to cause domestic violence. Of course, plenty of fellas could, could, could get DNA tests. Right. Okay. I, 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 a Negro man came to me. He said to me, they did a DNA test and... They say the baby ain't his own. So wow. I said, what do you think? He said he believe it mix up. <laughs> <laughs> I said, what, what do you think? <laughs> he said, I think the DNA test is mixed up. Oh, Lord. And I start to share tests. <laughs> I start to share tests. I shared tests. Oh, forgive me. And I said to him, don't, don't mind forgive the DNA <laughs> test, eh? If you think you're forgive the father, me, man. Forgive me. <laughs> if you think you're the father, continue to be responsible and love the child. Why are you something else? Yeah. I think they see their phone call, man. Yeah. Why are you something else? Oh, Carl. Oh, Carl. <laughs> Hello. Welcome to Freedom Match. Hello. Yes, ma'am. Mr. Manka. Yes. What about those babies that born in hospital and you have sometimes they are makes mothers are given the wrong babies. That, what about that? Right. Because I know a woman who the man beat her for years. And as that child grew up, I said to the woman, you see that child here, daddy, your child? There was no. nothing for the woman. Right? So you were right. There is mix up. The only yeah. children there in mix up is my children. Because <laughs> I used to guard the door. <laughs> Why are you laughing? I got the dog. I had one child born. And then when the nurse came out with the child, I asked the child, I asked the nurse, I said, what is this? <laughs> the nurse said, oh, Mr. Monkey, it's a girl. I said, loose the pompous. And yeah. she looked like I was strange. I said, woman, loose this pompous here. <laughs> Before I leave. Uh, and she had to lose the pompous. Well, I, I said, okay, this is a female child. If you'd like to make a call, now please. show me that you have the baby mark. And she marked the baby, and I put a mark on the baby because all the baby symbols look alike. Yeah, you're right about that. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, that right. woman is correct. All right? Mm -hmm. So, Carl and Menace, y'all can create domestic problem because they are among these Negroes, they love owning the wrong baby. All right? So that's the way it is. 
Anybody else on the phone? Shall I keep on this topic? No, that's, I got some text to read. You have some text? Uh, okay. Quite a bit of text. Yeah. Uh, here we go. Um, uh, spiritual advice for your information, women outnumber men. So does that mean a man should marry more than one woman in order for a woman to have children? Do you see? This, this text doesn't make any sense. Um, Just read it. Read the text. Why do you continue to disappoint me with your views? Who's this? Read the text by spiritual advice and do not uh, become spiritual emotional. Spiritual advisor, continue to be a witness. You're sitting there for a reason. Speak up and speak out. Yes. Yeah, this first text is ridiculous, actually. Okay. Um, so here's what this text is saying. Women outnumber men. So does that mean a man should marry more than one? Look. <sighs> Carl Bethel and Minnis is opening the door for same-sex marriage. That's what it says. Step by step. All of this was on the referendum. So if they are going to open the door for same-sex marriage, they might as well be revolutionary and say that men can have more than one wife. They might mm. as well. If that is what they're going to do, you might as well uh, allow men to have more than one wife if the first wife agrees. Good afternoon, Mr. Monka. You seem so happy that Amada is marrying an immigrant, but he did not marry his behemoth common law for almost three decades. That is not true. Amada's wife lived in the United States of America, and he could not marry the common law um, woman because his wife refused to give him a bill of divorce. You don't know Amada. His wife lived in the United States. Now that she is dead, he is free. To marry. Yeah, from the law marriage, and yes. Amada <clears throat> is the kind of man that every woman that he has been in love with, if he was in a position to marry them, Amada always did the right thing. So you don't know Amada. His wife just died in the United States. That's why he didn't marry the common law one. Good afternoon, gentlemen. Can you tell me what Mr. Robinson meant by when he said don't give an increase? Don't give a salary increase that will cause corruption. So it means they all plan on stealing. He's saying Is that... Is that what he's saying? They all know that they were faced with salaries from the from the beginning. Something of that nature. I mean, uh, this text is not clear. But I guess they're trying to figure out what, what did Mr. Robinson mean Robinson that. said that by an increase, uh -huh. it will help to avoid corruption. That is his argument. Uh, I don't know. But that is, yeah, I don't know if that's true. But it's not true because yeah. we know Minnis is a wealthy man who never disclosed the contracts. And if you don't disclose the contract, that is evidence of corruption. So that ain't yeah, true. Corruption is a character issue, not salary issue. Yes, yeah. it is yeah. a character yeah. issue. Yeah. Uh, Mr. Monk, these people don't have behemoths at heart. We have correction officers who, whose careers are in limbo because many of them were forced into retirement due to the fact that they did not reach the rank of a gazette officer, which for some of them was not their fault. Correction officers suffering plus they owed money. So Minnis and Travis, uh, they can't be right about the race. Well, Minnis need a race. Don't forget now, these are greedy people. And what time is it? It's the people's time. It is the politician time. But I thank God that fellow Brave Davis and I, Chester Cooper, has told them that they are drawing a battle line over MP's salary. All right? All these civil servants need increase. I was just looking at the report that I got from the X-ray department where they have not had any increase. And the radiation is leaking. Lord, touch the hearts of the FNM so that they will know it's the people's time and they should not raise their salary. Reject greed, FNMs. This is Freedom March. I'll be right back. Do you have something to say to the Senator? Call Freedom March at 323 7775. Toll free from anywhere in the Bahamas at 242 300 0045. Freedom March with Rodney Monker, only on ILTV. 
This is Freedom March with Rodney Monker. Welcome back to Freedom March, broadcasting live on ILTV Studios here in Nassau, Bahamas. Before I go to the phone, I want to read a statement from Progressive Liberal Party, former Attorney General Alison Maynard. Um, this is re a response by Mrs. Alison Maynard Gibson QC to false statement in the Nassau Guardian. And this is how her statement go. In the second November edition of the Nassau Guardian, under the headline, quote, Henfield, both FNM and PLP abuse Nolly Posequai, end quote. The Nassau Guardian published the following words. Former Attorney General Alison Maynard Gibson represented the Hayes until her appointment in May 2012. This is a false statement. The facts which are easily verifiable from the court record are that I only appeared once pro bono for the Hayes. My one-time appearance was at their arraignment which was years before my appointment as Attorney General. Several other lawyers appeared in court for the Hayes after my appearance. When the several other lawyers appeared for the Hayes, they and the court clearly did not regard me as the lawyer for the Hayes. I was not the lawyer for the Hayes until my appointment in May 2012. I remain hopeful that the Nassau Guardian, as a responsible newspaper, will apologize for its false statement. That had to do with George Hayes and his wife when they were charged for importation of some illegal ammunition, culminating in then acting Attorney General Jerome Fitzgerald granting to them what they call nolly prosequi, meaning he discontinued the prosecution, no prosecution. Hello, welcome to Freedom March. Yes, good, good afternoon, Senator. How are you? I am fine, sir. What's on your mind? Uh, well, um, um, I have two young ladies in, in Palmetto Point, Elutra. Yes. That is waiting for you to send them a birthday shout out. I shall do that, yes. All right. Uh, Miss Gloria Moss, yes. elated birthday. And Miss Donna Matthew celebrating her birthday today. They say they right by the right by the television looking at you and they ain't moving to go out to celebrate and tell you wish them a happy birthday. I shall do that. Give me the second lady name again. Uh Miss Mrs. Donna McPhee. Donna McPhee. Yes, sir. Donna McPhee, I'll start with you. Happy birthday. I'm the great, great grandson of Marion McPhee. She died in Exuma in 1918. So, I must be family to you or your husband. And to Gloria Moss, happy birthday and enjoy it, you and Donna McPhee. I thank you, comrade. And I thank you very much, sir. God save the Queen. Yes, sir. Hello. Welcome to Freedom Match. Hello. Hello. S yes, speak to me. How are you doing today, Mr. Rodney? Well, I'm here. Praise First the time Lord. caller. Welcome. What's I want to speak to the spiritual advisor, please. The spiritual advisor is listening. Yes, go ahead. How are you doing? Spiritual advisor, good day. How are you doing? I'm fine. I don't like how you be bashing women, you know. How? Oh, how do they uh, do that? Are you married? Well, no, I'm divorced. You're divorced? Yeah. But you ready to put woman down? No, no, listen. We yes, you do. Listen uh, to what uh, I have to what say. What did I do? Listen. Okay. So what? You're calling children bastard. They still the woman, you know. And. I'm listening. The law has been uh, changed. Go and ahead. you have to do better. You're supposed to be a treasure, right? You're supposed to be a Christian. Mm -hmm. You need to do better, okay? So let me and ask a question. Let me ask a question. Um, children born outside of wedlock, 
It happened yeah, but long time yeah, ago, sir. So I yeah, I'm not disputing that. Down. That was not my argument. You know, I wonder if you listen to me carefully. I did am. You, did you listen to the show? Yes, I am. I said right in front of my TV listening. Yeah. So you and you always passion women. I bash women. Yes, you do. Okay. All right. Well, let me apologize. You have sisters, right? Of course, I do. Be careful. You can't be okay. doing treating women like that. Ha, ha, ha. What do you mean by treating? Everybody women? make mistakes, spells or lies. So? Okay. All right. Okay. So Listen, you, you want me? You, you want me to be soft on sin, right? That's what no, you want I to didn't do. say that. That's how it sounds to no, me. No, no, I don't. I'm not. I'm not saying do, that. Do you realize that Jesus Christ condemned fornication? You realize I realize that? that. Yeah. So what's the problem? I'm only a I, messenger. Listen, um, the spiritual advisor and I shall reflect together wow. and pray over it. I don't understand Your the nature comment. of that call. Okay. We are, we have a great it. evening. You all have a nice day. Okay. All right. Bye. Take care. Bye-bye. Hello. Welcome to Freedom Match. Hello. Hello. Yes, ma'am. Brother Monka. My love. How are you? Listen, I'm struggling with this new amendment that the FNM is going to put in. Okay, keep on struggling. Okay. And you, spiritual advisor. Yes, ma'am. How you doing? You all right? Very well, thank you. Great, 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 great. This is one of the women's them. Oh, okay. hallelujah. And you know what I want you to do? Uh -huh. I want you to send out a special birthday shout to my daughter. Uh -huh. Her birthday is today. Wow. Thank you. What's your daughter's name? Her name is Samantha. Samantha okay. Kemp. Samantha Camp. Okay. Uh huh. Go ahead, my Happy spiritual. birthday, Samantha Camp. Coming in from Come your on, mom. Come on, I'm spiritual advice. Happy birthday to Samantha Camp. Coming in from a mom. What's your name? Sorry. What's my your name? name? Yeah. Sheila Kalman. Well, who's Samantha Camp? My daughter. Okay. Miss uh, Kalma, <laughs> we wish your daughter a, a wonderful <laughs> birthday. Ah, oh, that's more like it. It's a bit enthusiasm. Of course. Yes. Yeah. All right. But Thank say, you. He's not leader of the woman them, you know. It's me. Yeah, director, Mr. Say what? Linka. He is not leader of the woman them. <laughs> I am leader of the woman them. So I have... Can I, can I hear it from the leader of the woman them? Yes, man. Wishing my daughter a Samantha happy birthday. Kemp. Samantha Kemp. Listen to me. You have a wonderful mother. And I say happy birthday to you. <laughs> and remember... Honor thy father and thy mother, that thy days may be long upon the land, which the Lord Jehovah thy God give you. That's what we're talking about, Brother Manka. Yes, ma'am. You have a blessed day. Thank you very much. <laughs> Hello, welcome to Freedom Match. Good afternoon, gentlemen. Yes, ma'am. How are you? I'm okay. Mr. Manka, yes. you know, it is very interesting to see how um, cunning... I would say that these people who are in authority in this, in this country are by trying to change these laws. I mean, the people rejected those referendum um, on both occasions. Yes. But it seems as though they're hell bent on doing something. And it, it would cause people to wonder whether they have some ulterior motive. They do. If, if, if there are some children somewhere out there that they're now trying to bring into this country and say that they are behaving citizens. You know, it, it, is, it is very upsetting to see how they are trying to pull this one on us. Yeah. And, it, and I would wait and see what the Haymans will do. You know, it was interesting because around last year, this time, everyone was getting ready for We March. Yes. What has happened? We March has been uh, paid now. He is in the Senate. Yes. So you're not hearing anything from him. No. Okay? And all the other persons who are there shouting last year, they have nothing to say now. It's, it seems as though, like, as if the people have eaten crazy glue. You know, they, like they drank the poison Kool-Aid now. Yes. And, and, and they're not uh, uh, prepared to come out and really take a stand against this government. I say we need to march. Listen, we need to march. You, you, you are so right. We need to march because the forces of evil yes. is slowly yes. eroding the referendum. Uh -huh. Next thing you know, Carl Bettel will be pushing... The gender thing, um. <laughs> and that's kinky sex, <laughs> and kinky sex is a sin. I don't care yes. who believes in it, but you're right. But we have to pray for our country. Yeah. God bless you both. God save the queen. Yes, ma'am. God, God bless save you too. the queen, my Negro sister. Hello, welcome to Freedom Match. Hello, good afternoon. It's Rodney Monko. So, this is I. Uh, 
Well, the uh, MP, he has uh, approved like a raise next year or the third or next year. Shouldn't it be across for every government agency, and the nurses, the teachers, the police, who got to protect and serve for our Yes, you are right. Line. The MP should get nothing, and we should give it to the nurses, the doctors, the maids, the janitors, and those people. It, it, it should be spread all across the board. Yes, but the MPs don't need nothing, all right? They shouldn't get nothing. No, they, look, they just come to work. Minutes even ain't opened his files yet. Travis. Well, it's a good thing I wait for PLP. You want a PLP? I like to um, vote, uh, you send a shout out to my niece, Kristen Brooks. Kristen Brooks? Yes, sir. Your uncle voted PLP. Um, uh, uncle is Adonis. Adonis? A-D-O-N-I-S. Okay, Adonis, you're a great man. Um, right, thanks a lot, sir. You take good care. You too. Hello, welcome to Freedom March. Hello? Are you answering me? Welcome. Give me the I'm next. one of the women there. Oh, hallelujah. How? I'm one of the women there, and I love your show. Thank you. Thank you. But you know, special advice is out of order. Rebuke him. Yeah, how so? What's, what's going on? Special what? advice is right out of order. Order what what do they do wrong? Just downgrading the women them. How? How am I doing and that? Mr. Monka, yes. You are one uh, in a million because you love the women them. Listen, I love the women them. Tell these oh, women stop the having these children my outside of their house. My spiritual advice stop it. I love tell you and God save the queen. Stop it, my spiritual advice. Tell God these save women the stop having these stop children it. outside of their house. What about law. the man? Same thing. No, yes. no, 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 no. The principle apply, yes. applies both ways because the woman can't get pregnant with the man. Yes. So, so why everybody bashing me for this? You, yes, the Bible condemns. Advisor, listen, listen to her. The woman them. Yes. Say what? What are they doing? My God, you bashing the woman them and you all stop. Is for the woman you all stop having these children out of wedlock. Eh? Get married no. and then have these children. My that's why this advisor. country. That's why this advisor. country is a mess right now. Stop having these children outside of wedlock. Get married. Rodney is the leader of the woman, them, not you. Not Get you. married. Spiritual advisor, stop it. Stop that sinning. All right. Dallin. Have a great day. You're awake with him, eh? You take good care, my love. And we love you, um, Mr. Manka. Yeah, we love Thank you too. You. Thank you. You don't love me? Very much. <laughs> Do well, my dear. Don't worry about the spiritual advisor. <laughs> spiritual advisor, you are like those men who caught the yeah. woman in the very act of adultery. Yeah. And you want to stone her no. and let the married man go no. free. Uh -uh. No. I what, want you to stop you it. You know what we want to do? We want to tell them, go thy way and sin no more. That's what we want to do. Hello. Welcome to Freedom Match. <laughs> Hello. Hello. Speak to me. Hello. Welcome to Freedom Match. Hello. Sir. Hey, Rodney. Yes. How you doing there, man? Listen, I'm struggling. What's yeah, up, man? Yeah, spiritual wise. How you doing? I'm fine. How you doing, man? Wonderful. Uh, Good. Mr. Senator, yes. I need you to send a birthday out to my son, Mark Monroe Jr., I'll say there. Mark Monroe. Uh, Mark Monroe Jr. from his father, Felix Monroe, J.P., yes. Esquire. I shall. And um, no money for those, those cabinet ministers. No money. Well, you got to match. Oh, yeah, you're not always match. If you want one to man them. This is powerful. All right. Well, let me wish your son, Mark Monroe. Yes. Mark Monroe Sr. Senior. Senior. And Mark Monroe Jr. And Mark Monroe Jr. Yes, yeah, from their father. Yes, yeah, from your Felix father, Monroe, Felix JP. Monroe, JP. Yes, sir. You are saluted. Thank you, Felix that, Monroe. Always a pleasure. God bless you. Uh, all right. Hello. Welcome to Freedom March. Hello. Yes, ma'am. Mr. Manker. Yes, ma'am. How are you? Listen, I'm struggling with the forces of evil. This is one of the woman them. Oh, praise the Lord. But what I'm telling you right now, the lady called prior to and called for the, for the spiritual advisor. Yes. Mm -hmm. I was hurt the way she talked to him, but let me tell you something. Yes. Let the spiritual advisor live on. He's a man of God. Oh, hallelujah. He's a man of God. He is. And I'm telling you, they, they rap him so much, and he's just accepting everything that they say. But let me tell you something. We will survive. Absolutely. We will survive, Miss Spiritual Advisor. 
Yes, ma'am. Keep on. Yeah. Hold on. I know you very well. I know Mr. Monko very well. Yeah. Well, we're going to meet one day. Absolutely. Absolutely. And Mr. Monko would be surprised to know who is this calling him today. Wow. Really? But I'm one of the woman damn. Lord right. Jesus, I thank you. That I'm one of the Mr. Monko. You know me very, very well. Wow. I can't wait to meet you. And you... We will meet one day very soon. I Absolutely. yearn but to meet you. But keep on, keep on, because this first advisor, oh, he gave my heart so much advice. He, he helped me so much. When I listen to him, it just lifts my heart. Wow. I appreciate that. That sounds great. This but I'm going to get a, a number from him one day. I know, I know him too, but you know we're going to meet. All right, okay. yeah. We're going to make a place where we could meet. When you see me, Mr. Monco, you will know that who you lift up one time on the family march, so you know who I am. Okay, my sister, this I'm is I'm not going to give my name. Don't give your name. But Mr. Monker? Yes, ma'am. We are so close. You don't know how close we are. Wow. I yearn to meet you. Yes, my darling. I yearn to meet you. And continue to take care of spiritual advisor. He is, oh my God, he is so humble. I appreciate that, ma'am. He is so humble. I appreciate yes, he that. Is. Spiritual advisor, we're going to meet one day? Absolutely, let's do that. Mr. Monker? Yes, ma'am. We're going to meet one day. You can be surprised who's just talking to you. I'm not going to give my name, because <laughs> everybody knows who I am. I yearn to meet you. Yes, darling. You take good care. Can you? Okay. The show is... Powerful. Okay. The show is... Hello, welcome to Freedom Match. Hello, welcome to Freedom Match. Are you there? Hello. Yes, ma'am. Hi. How Hi. are you? <laughs> Spiritual advisor, don't pay them no mind here. Yeah? yeah, you see that they 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 railroad me for something that I'm supposed to be standing up for, which yeah, is the right, right thing. Yeah, yeah. You're only speaking the truth as far yeah. as the Bible is concerned. That's all. I mean, that's all I'm saying. It's <laughs> it's what is written. Now, what you want me to the do? Bible. That's right. It's what you is know? the Bible. Suppose I get on this set and I say, "Hey, it's okay to go ahead and fornicate and have as many kids as you want to." I could never be a Christian or preach in that manner. That's right. wrong. I can't do that. So That's I have right. to stand by biblical principles. Right, exactly. Absolutely. Fornication it's is a in the Bible. Yes, that it's wrong. To be committed. That's yes, right. it's wrong. Okay, and Mr. Monica, you look so lovely today. You, you really think so? Oh, yes. I love that black shirt and that beautiful bow tie. I thank you very much. <laughs> okay, you all okay. have a good day. You do the same. I thank you. These all are right. love yeah. offerings right. from the woman Bye -bye. there. Hello, welcome to Freedom March. Uh, hello. Sir. Hey, good day, Mr. Monka and spiritual advisor. Yes, good afternoon. I just wanted to ask you something quick, Mr. Monka, about the um, the raise what minister wants to do for the um, government. With Travis Robinson, he said that um, he thinks it will deter the um, parliamentary members from engaging in corruption, corrupted activity or whatever, but I don't think that he should have made that statement because... Those persons on minimum wage, that means they should get a raise so that they wouldn't go and steal money on the, on that the is job. True. You were right. Using his argument to the full um, logical conclusion, the police should get, the defense force, the custom, the immigration, the nurses, the doctors, the janitors, the school teachers. My brother, also, um, you're brilliant. Peter Turnquist, he needs to stop wasting his time looking for um, funds that he thinks is missing. Right. Because he won't find the funds. From my understanding, what um, a source told me that the Ministry of Finance, he shuffled the staff members around, and those persons yes. um, who was in certain areas before he shuffled it around would have gave him a better understanding of what, where the funds went. That is true. You are so correct. I thank you for those powerful comments. You are an intelligent Negro young man. Thank you. All right, take care. Hello, welcome to Freedom March. Welcome to Freedom March. Welcome. Hello. Mr. Manka. Yes, ma'am. How you doing today? Listen, I'm here trying to struggle with my spiritual advisor. <laughs> well, let me tell you one good old thing. You have a good spiritual advisor. Oh, praise the Lord. And I want the spiritual advisor to know that he still has people out here love him. I know your mother, I know your father, and I know your grandmother. Oh, really? Wow. Yes. Okay. And I just want you to be encouraged and have a broad shoulder. When you're in this uh, uh, kind of thing, what you're in, people will bash you and people will praise you. Uh, but yes. when God gives you the praise, 
Yeah. Absolutely. That will be well done. Nobody can take it away. So I agree don't with mind that. what your body say. You are in love, and we love you. I appreciate that, love, guys. Now, Mister Bud Cohen, let me tell you one thing. Yes, ma'am. We are Dwayne Sands. That's your doctor. Doctor Dwayne Sands, the Minister okay. of Health. Yes. Now he, you said last week that he will be working in the hospital for the poor people free. Yes. That is not so. Really? I meet a lady today, and the lady tell me that her grandson had this heart problem. And she went to the doctor, to, to, to Wayne Sands, to see him. And when she reached there, she sat in the office, and the lady, the nurse, tell her that Dr. Wayne Sands ain't reached yet. So apparently, when Wayne Sands reached, Wayne Sands asked the, the nurse if any patient for me today. So the lady said yes. Now when the, uh, uh, Wayne Sands see the old lady with the child, so he get the information from the old lady, and, it, and the, he asked the old lady, do you have any policy? So the woman said, I get no policy. He said, I don't have none but this child have a bad heart. But the man leave that lady there in the office and tell him he coming right back. And she and he never returned. That woman be in that office all day. The when nurse had to tell her, man ain't coming back. When this happened? This happened uh, uh, two days ago. Well, I shall immediately find him. Yes, because he because they, they're lying and talking, but they, uh, they don't want no pay. They want pay, and they get their pay for those kind of work. Um, listen. Dwayne Sands is an honorable man. I shall speak with well, him. I can tell you, don't trust everybody now. Well, listen, I can trust him because I lay down on the table. Yeah, well, I know you, you do good for you. Yeah. But what about the other person who needs some good to be done? But if he does good for me, he can have to do it for everybody. That's what I'm talking about. So I will talk to him. Yes. And you, 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 you call me. Let me give you my cell number. You call me later on 434 Five seven six zero. Yeah. And so I can see how we could arrange things, okay? But okay. At, but at the moment, I don't have the cell phone in the studio. Okay. You take well, good you care. you'll be encouraged. I'll be encouraged. I'm your spiritual advisor. I love you. Be encouraged. Bro. I love you too. I love All you right. too. God bless you. This is powerful. Um, Hello. Welcome to Freedom March. Anybody there? Hello. Yes, sir. Hello. Oh, yes. I am one of those men them. This is powerful. <laughs> What's on your mind? <laughs> What's on your mind? Oh, uh, yes. I come today to talk about the controversy about how the children have to leave out to school when 16 years old. Um, are you opposed to that? Yes, sir. Sure. What age do you think they should leave government school? I think they should be in school for at least about 18 years old. I agree with you. Because if some children reach the age of 16, Yes. They don't have their BGCSE to get a job. They only have their BJCs. Right. So I think they should raise that age up to 18. Well, listen, I want to give you a project. Why don't you sit down, write a letter to the Minister of Education, making that suggestion and telling him why, and then drop a copy here at ILTV Studios so I can see it. And I'll invite you on the show so we can discuss it. How does that sound? Yes, that sounds good, Mr. Monko. Well, this is powerful. So you have until next Monday to have written the letter, send it to the minister, and drop a copy here with your name and address. Okay? Yes, sir. You take good care. You're a great young man. And spiritual advisor. Hey. I would like to say don't mind them negative people who go who's the who bringing you down. Yeah, I appreciate that, man. God bless you, eh? Yes, sir. This Have a good man. day now. You do the same. All right. Great. It's a great young man. Hello. Welcome to Freedom Match. How are you doing? Right here, man. That's good. That's good. Man, how you doing, Spurs? Hey, how you doing, man? Everything okay? Everything good. Great. Do you all think it's a lot of traffic in the Bahamas? Um, um not really. It all depends on the time of the day, I not guess. Not really. What Let about in Nassau? Um, well, perhaps there are a lot of vehicles here on the island. Yeah. You have a lot. Yeah. And you know, plenty of them don't need to be on the island. Why? Now, do you think they should ban these Hondas? 
Well, Hondas. Barnett. Let me think about it. Call me back tomorrow because there's one more caller and call me back on it. I, I, I just want to get this last caller because I only have about a minute before the clock runs out. All right, think about that spiritual advisor. Yeah, I'll okay. do that. Okay. Hello, welcome. <laughs> Hello, welcome to Freedom March. Okay. Well, my spiritual advisor, we're coming to the end of the show. Carl Bethel has stirred the haunted nest. And I think in the future, I'm seeing things. I'm seeing a lot of domestic dispute because Carl should call a town hall meeting mm -hmm. so we can discuss this. Because as Fred Mitchell says on his um, website, he thinks that what the FNM is doing is unlawful. I look at that tomorrow if it is God's will. But for the time being, to the woman them, I salute you. To the man them, I salute you. And if it is God's will, tomorrow, please join us here on Freedom March. My spiritual advisor, quickly, give me a bow. Absolutely, tomorrow. This is powerful. The thoughts, views, and comments expressed by Rodney Monker, his guests, callers, and advisors on Freedom March are not necessarily those of the management, ownership, or production unit of ILS, the Verizon Media Group. Freedom March is a production of ILTV Studios and cannot be reproduced or represented in part or entirety without the express written consent of the Verizon Media Group. Freedom March is the intellectual property of the Verizon Media Group. Copyright 2017. All rights are reserved. <laughs>